Do you the think blue line blast from the lunar ice ring would still be floating in space with these three galaxies combined? I think it would have circumvented the entire known galaxy. It's that quick. That's what I think. Do you think um, we're going to go back to the moon and Mars and stuff? But when we get there, just put a little, little hot drink out there. I mean, it's, it's freezing in space, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No I refrigeration is necessary. No refrigeration. Think about that. Yeah. I mean, imagine blue line blast just uh -huh. flying off into the nether regions of space, eventually puncturing an alien spacecraft, they track it down, they want revenge, they fly to the moon, they drop off, you get a little tussle, why brawl, Brahmas, aliens, who doesn't want that? Well, Chad Stewart here, with gloves off, joined by the head coach of the Air Force Academy, Coach Frank Saratori. Coach, how you doing? Good, Chad. How's, uh, how's things in the great state of Texas? We're, we're doing good. You know, this, this season with COVID, it seems like it's going on forever. I think guys reported in September, and uh, the last regular season games are May 15th. So, <laughs> it's You know what, though? You guys, uh, comparatively with a, a lot of uh, sporting leagues in the country, including the NCAA, you guys have done a terrific job down there. I know some of the games were lost earlier, uh, but uh, as, as far as uh, – you know, as far as your schedule and playing and uh, those players being able to develop for another year, you guys have done a fantastic job of getting your games in. So I, I don't really think uh, from from my standpoint, from a, a college coach, uh, I don't think uh, our, our players that were pulling out of that league have, have, have lost a whole lot. They didn't lose a year for sure. They didn't even lose. They lost maybe a little part of the year. Hey, and that could happen. At any time, if a guy gets injured, this or that, you lose a few games. But for the most part, I think um, I think uh, North American League has done a fantastic job. We've uh, we've been working hard, and and it's funny. So many other teams from other states, like uh, Junior Flyers from Philadelphia, uh, Northeast Generals, all sorts of teams have come down to our barn to play to have regular season games because of regulations and whatnot. So it's not just been us having games; it's been I think we've hosted more junior games than any barn in, in <laughs> this year. And I feel it. This, this old guy is feeling the, the pain of the grind. Yeah, well, that's all right. Yeah. You know, one thing that our fans are going to want to know, uh, we've sent several players to the Air Force Academy over the years and more coming down the pipe soon. What is the commitment level above and beyond playing hockey to be a member of the Air Force Academy? Well, I mean, obviously, like, we have to look at a very well-rounded student athlete. First of all, we have to have players that can compete at the Division One college level. And so we have to have good players. But with that, uh, those players also have to be good students. They have to be good citizens. They have to be American citizens. Uh, they have to be healthy. They can't have any gross morbidity. I mean, even asthma can DQ you uh, from, from coming to the Air Force Academy. And then, you know, you've got to be willing uh, also uh, you're going to serve your country at the end. You're, you're committed to a five-year commitment, and that's the same uh, at, the, at the Air Force Academy and at West Point. They don't have Division One hockey at the Naval Academy, but we do at Army and Air Force, and, uh, and, uh, and those are the commitments. Uh, and so when you look at the pool, when you look at the overall pool out there, A, we have to take, like I said, uh, they have to be good hockey players, but they all have to be, uh, American citizens. That's going to lop off a few right there, and uh, then they have to be they have to be really good students, and that so that lot that eliminates a lot of kids. And uh, you know, most of the kids that are playing at, at at your level are are good kids and good citizens. But there's there's a few who just uh, you know our deal is just not for them. Now that that's all the bad news. I mean, the good news is is uh, uh, we we offer a heck of an opportunity at the service academies and. And, uh, you know, you want to come in you, and, and uh, you're looking for an Ivy League type education. Uh, we're going to provide you uh, uh, with an Ivy League education. The commitment at the end, the five-year commitment, is a bad word. It, it, like, it, they call it a commitment. It should be an opportunity. 
uh, because basically you're going to go out and, and work for the Air Force. Say you graduate uh, with a business degree or yet graduate with a engineering or a civil engineering degree. You're going to go out into the Air Force and you're going to work a business job or you're going to work an engineering job or you're going to work a civil engineering job. You're basically going to do something that you're going to that you're that you're going to want to transition into the civilian sector if and when you go there. So, you know, we offer real world degrees. You're doing real things at the Air Force Academy. We, you know, we are we're kind of a white collar branch of the armed forces. We cover a lot of those areas. Obviously, flying is a big thing. Um, you know, a, a lot of the academy grads, regardless of what they graduate in, uh, that you, you could graduate in any type of major, really, and still go to pilot training and, and become a pilot. So that's a that's a big thing, too. But uh, to be honest with you, uh, the, the most work we do is identifying, is, is going out and identifying the right kid and the right family. Because when you do find that kid and uh, you find that family where, you know, they're looking for a high level education, uh, you know, they're looking for, you know, uh, a place where they can go, the, the job afterwards, they're going to be able to pump up their resume and uh, do type those types of things. The other thing that we offer, we offer an Ivy League education without the, uh, without the uh, uh, Ivy League sticker shock. I mean, <laughs> the government pays basically you're on a full, you're on a full ride plus here. You're getting, you're getting more than just a full ride. They actually pay our, our guys a monthly salary uh, to come here. So when you do find the right, the right kid and the right family, it, it, it's not, it's not a difficult, it's not a difficult sell. It sells itself. Well, I've noticed on your roster over the years, you have a heavy amount of North American league kids. What is it about that league in particular that is a good breeding ground for you? Well, that's a really good question. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, to answer it directly, um, you have, we're looking for American players. So if you're looking for elite American hockey players, the two, the two primary grounds, and they're secondary grounds, don't get me wrong, uh, but the two primary grounds are the United States Hockey League and the North American Hockey League. Now, in the United States Hockey League, they, they attract of the, the law that you know the the young up and coming more the young up and coming the kids that have been identified early on as as maybe having high level pro potential and that type of thing uh, more more the more the uh, the glamour players uh, are going are in the USHL and they're there at an early age and a lot of those kids don't have an interest uh, at that point in time in their career uh, in 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 these service academies because of the of the commitment and they think, you know, Hey, I'm going to go to the USHL. I'm going to go to college for a couple of years. I'm going to sign up a, a high level pro contract and I'm going to be off to the races and making my bones. Uh, but uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always work that way. The one thing I like about the North American league, the North American league, the league of opportunity, there's a lot of scholarships there. Uh, but also there's, there's kids that are looking for an opportunity. Maybe they got cut from uh, uh, one or two or three USHL teams, and they end up in the North American League. And you got more of the of the late bloomers. Uh, we've had at Air Force more success with with like our teams are good when we're old and we're deep. So right. we 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 don't want to bring that 18 year old freshman in. We want to bring we want to bring men in. We don't want to bring boys in. And um, when you're bringing a player out of the North American League, you're bringing a man. You're bringing a 20 year old man. Generally, what they've been through culturally and that type of thing in their career, uh, they're a lot more appreciative of, 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 what, of what we offer. Uh, by the time they, they get to the academy, they know more what they're getting into. They handle all the rigors of it, you know, academically, athletically, militarily. They handle the, the, the you know, basic training, uh, what, all, you know, the different things that they have to do militarily. They, they're more apt they, to, they, they, to embrace that you know, because it's part of the deal. It's part of that full ride that they're getting. And uh, like I said, we we just have better luck in the North American League. Again, we get the older player. We get that player that's had to deal with some adversity. They're appreciative of, of all the things that that uh, that our scholarship entails and the opportunities after they graduate. And so, to be honest with you, that league is tailor-made. Now, with that, you know, there you got the NCDC will pluck a kid or two out of there, and then you you've got not this year, but you've got some 
Americans that will be playing in Canada and British Columbia and Alberta League and that type of thing. What's been exciting, Chad, about this year is the North American League. Uh, those kids uh, that generally play up in Canada, the Americans couldn't get up there this year. Right. So all, all those kids, and, and you've got you've got uh, Dawson Tritt and a few of those guys that would have been in, in playing up a, a north of the border, they've all filtered down into the North American League. There's two USHL teams, uh, you know, uh, Madison and uh, I think Muskegon is the other one. Right. That, or no, Cedar Rapids. Madison and Cedar Rapids that, that didn't play this year. So that filtered 50 USHL kids into the North American League. There had to have been another 50 to 75 that were playing up in Canada that came that stayed in the North American League. That put well over 100 good players filtering into the North American League this year. And they didn't filter into the bottom of the North American League. They filtered into the top and they pushed the bottom out. And I, I talked to some buddies of mine that are coaching Tier 3. They said the talent level on their Tier 3 has never been better because they've gotten kids from the North American League that they wouldn't have gotten before. So the, the North American League, the product that you the people are watching in the North American League this year, it's always been a good product in, that, in, the, North, in the North American League, but the product has never been better. It like, hey, there's players in that league that, that had 20 points last year that are lucky to have 10 this year. And it's not right. that they've gotten worse. It's just the, it's the competitive level of the league. The North America, the, hopefully, we're hoping that the North American League will be able to hold a lot of those U.S. born players, more of them, because that's that's our prime hunting ground. That's what that's what we're hoping for. And, uh, you know, to double down on that point you made, there's four teams in the North American League that opted out this year. So more players coming in, fewer teams, fewer places for them to go. Our, our tier three team uh, was completely loaded this year with a lot of guys. I mean, the top two lines in our tier three team could have played on just about any North American league team. And uh, so it's been, it has been a good year at both levels. I want to ask you about uh, one of the young men that you got recently, Sam Brennan. How, how is he doing? He was a fan favorite down here for sure. Sammy was made for our place. Um, he was he like, uh, he, do you want to talk about, uh, a uh, young man who's a good student, um, a good a good citizen, um, a good hockey player. Uh, he he has all the attributes that that, that we look for um, in a prospective cadet athlete uh, uh, for the Air Force Academy. To be honest with you, uh, I wish I had a daughter his age because I would uh, <laughs> I, I would introduce them. I would I would have Sam over for dinner on a regular basis. I'm telling you that that's what kind of young man he is. He's and uh, uh, you, you don't have to be as special as Sam to be successful in our environment. But uh, but uh, Sam is good. Sam has got it all. He like if he was a baseball player, he'd be what do they call him? Four tool, five tool. Um, he's got it all. Uh, that young man uh, is a is a home run for us. And uh, and we've got uh, as we talked about before, uh, we've got several uh, players from the Brahmas actually. There's several players from the Brahmas not only coming to Air Force but also the Army. Right. And, uh, we can't really talk about we can't talk about them directly with their names and all that type of thing. Uh, but I know I, Brian Riley's a close friend of mine at uh, Army, and uh, we couldn't be more excited about the players that we have coming. Not uh, you know out of North American League, not just North American League, but but uh, Lone Star in particular. And it's a it's a great spot. And, uh, you know, one thing that makes a place a great spot is, uh, you know, you know, uh, is, is, is who's operating it. And uh, that organization is run in a, in a first class manner. And, of course, uh, you know, the man behind it all is, is Danny Wildfond. And uh, Fonger is uh, quite an operator. Uh, we, we place players down there because we know that he's going to get the best out of them. And, uh, and uh, if you play for Fonger, uh, and you succeed with Fonger, uh, you, you can come to a service academy and basic training's not, <laughs> not going to be that challenging. Fonger's going to, no, you got to, he's going to challenge you in every way, shape, or form. You know what? And I always like to say, I, I, I sent Fonger my boys and he sends me back, man. Yeah, that's, that's true. You know, he is, uh, he is as hardcore a coach as I've ever seen. Um, when, the, when the boys get a few days away, you know, as they've had a couple of times this year, I, I fear for them on that first skate back because it is he is foaming at the mouth, ready to get them going. Two a days, 
in the middle of the season. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. But he's a good man. He loves his players and he wants to make them better. Um, he cares. And you know what about one thing about him, about Flounder? He's fair. Like the players, the guys that we get, you know, I know how tough he is, but they love him. And they love him because they know that he loves them. <laughs> that's actually, I know it all. You know, and, and that's a great segue to my last question for you today is, what are the players that are coming into your program next year, whether it be from the Brahmas or from wherever, what are they going to have to do to work themselves into the lineup in their first year? Well, next year, to be honest with you, we're, we are, uh, with college hockey now becoming very old because they gave everybody a fifth year, all the players that are matriculating in college got a fifth year because of COVID. So everybody, every team in the country is going to be older next year, except for Army and Air Force. We couldn't keep our players because of their military. They got their, we are a four-year program, so we, we didn't benefit by that, by getting that, uh, by getting uh, that extra year. So the, all of college hockey is going to be very, very old. We are going to be very, very young just because of some circumstances. We only have one senior on our roster next year, and um, he's, a, he's a goalie. We have a goalie from Lone Star County. But, uh, you know, we have a, also have a veteran goalie. So we have a very young team. And so um, the young men that we have coming in next year in our freshman class are going to have a kind of a unique opportunity to challenge for quality playing time right from the get-go. Well, that'll be good. I know, I know that uh, Wild Fong will have them in shape and ready to go. And uh, they're going to be a little tired, hopefully, and they're not going to be, they're not going to have much time to vacation because that, the Robertson cup is, uh, is uh, in uh, June 20 something. And uh, our basic training starts like on the 27th. So, they're going to be coming, hopefully, from hoisting the Robertson Cup. They're going to be coming uh, to, uh, almost directly to Colorado Springs for basic training. That's that's the hope. And it's not too bad of a drive just up uh, <laughs> straight up from North Richland Hills. Well, Coach, we appreciate the time today. Uh, I know it's heavy recruiting season for you. It's been a long year. Get some rest because next year we're, uh, we're going to send you some guys and uh, go Air Force. That's the plan, Chad. Thanks for having me. You bet. Take care, Coach. You bet. Well, folks, write in and tell us what you think of a Mitchell Bigby <laughs> blue line blast from the looter ice rink. And until then, I love you. Baby arm. Baby arm. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Great job. Awesome, man. Eight. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and take two. Go. Yeah, right. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. Ask me for a light. And I thought that the coin. Two I saw expression. You gonna play it? Star Brahma's media team. I am not Chad Seward. Instead, I am Graham Burke, and I am the goal. <laughs> okay. All right, no, you're chill. Hey. Okay, I got it, guys. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you, lads. Was. Love you, mean it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your day. Okay. <laughs> It'd be funny. I should shave it and then like nick it like a thousand times. So get like, <laughs> like Def Leppard jeans. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Ready? And yeah, yeah. Cowboy. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and take two. Go. Yeah. Right. yeah. Is this? Funny, actually, I know it all.